Okay, this is going to be 7.1 part 2, shift function. So we'll actually be uh, using what we learned in part 1 now. Uh, I have an example here. f of x equals 2 times absolute value x minus 2 plus 2. Okay, so this is what that graph looks like here. Okay, uh, certain questions are going to ask you different ways to graph a related graph. Okay, so here's the graph of f of x. They want you to graph h of x in this one. Okay, uh, so h of x is its entirely own graph. It's not related to f of x at all. Okay, they just want you to realize that this is right to and up to. So this goes right to, up to for the vertex, right? For absolute value, you get a v, it's a vertex. Okay, so this is going to be the same exact shape of graph, except instead of going right to, up to, it's going to go right three down two, right? So I can go one, two, three, let's go down one, two. Okay, keep in mind, this first number didn't change, that's gonna change the shape of the graph, okay? Or the function, okay? This number didn't change, it's still two, so it should be the same slope, basically. Okay, so make sure that that is the same pathway. Now, if you get a problem like this, most likely it's going to be multiple choice. You won't have to draw it out yourself. Okay? Just know that I have to go right three down to from the origin, right from the very beginning. Okay? We'll see a problem in a little bit that won't be from the origin. Just see what I mean in a second. Notice that f of x equals yada, yada, yada. h of x equals yada, yada, yada. I did it from the origin. Okay? In a second example, so I'm going to come over here to example two. Okay? I've got f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 1 and minus 1. So it's going to go right 1, down 1. So that's where the vertex is. A different way they can ask you this problem, okay, is saying, say this uh, f of x in terms of g of x. So they'll say y is equal to g of x plus 3 plus 2. Okay, notice the difference here. Notice the difference here. This is y equals... Oh, this should be H or F. Excuse me. Okay, so uh, they'll change that. So what this means is instead of doing your own graph where you have to go plus 3 down 2, I'm going to take every point in this graph and I have to know I have to go left 3 up 2. So I take this point, I go left 1, two, three, and then I have to go up two. So one, two. Okay, so this will be my vertex spot. So it'll come off like that and like that. Okay, only thing is uh, every single spot stays the same. So when you draw this on Khan Academy, they're going to give you two points. All right, it's very easy to mess up uh, the slope. Okay, because if you're even a millimeter off, They'll count it as incorrect. Okay, so one thing you can do is just you know every point has to go left three up two. So I go left one, two, three, up two. I can do that if I have something crossing here. I can just go left one, two, three, up one, two. Okay, and that's how you can draw it. All right, you pick any point in the world on this original graph, go left three, up two. It'll work. Okay, so uh, moving on to another type of example we can see. Okay, it's a right formula problem. All right, so uh, I have y equals g of x. All right, this is g of x right here. I also have y equals f of x okay, right here. Make sure you pay attention to what's g of x and what's uh, f of x. All right, write a formula for f of x in terms of g of x. Write a, terms for, write a formula for f of x in terms of g of x. Okay, so basically I look at g of x and I say, how do I turn g of x into f of x? Well, I figure out where it moves. Does it move up, down, left, right, how far over? Okay, so I take a look at this. There's a vertex here. All right, this is, uh, this would be like an x to the third type of graph. Okay, this would be a cubic graph. Uh, what I have to do is figure out how far does this go over to that point. All right, I can see they're both one, two, three down. All right, they're on the same line. Uh, I can see that, oh, maybe that's one up, actually, okay? 
Uh, what I need to do is I have to go down one. Okay, so g of x will be down one. And how much over do I have to go? Okay, because this looks like it's at negative three, comma, negative three. This looks like it's at two, comma, negative four. Okay, so I go down one and I go right five, right? If I'm going to write five, I have to put minus five. So it'd be g of x minus five minus one. Okay? So if I ask you to write f of x in terms of g of x, you're doing it just like example two here, where you have to write g parentheses x, however left and right it went, and then however up and down it went. Okay? Last example you can see, uh, this is a, a square root example. So this is f of x, this is g of x. Given that f of x equals one half square root of x plus three plus two, okay? That just means it goes back one, two, three, up to two, okay? So this is where the vertex is for this square root uh, graph. You do the same thing for this. I realize it goes right two, down one. So all I have to do is rewrite this exact same formula. One half, parent, uh, excuse me, square root. Instead of plus three, it's gonna be minus two. So x minus two, and then it goes down one instead of up two. So minus one, okay? It's important that you remember uh, to change the sign, right? If I'm going to write, it's gonna be x minus two. So that'll be your answer, okay? Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions in this section uh, because it starts to ramp up in terms of difficulty. So uh, whatever questions you have, make sure you email me, okay? And we can sort out whatever problems we're having, all right?